go ahead and bring in Tony Ortiz, sportscaster for WWJ News Radio 950. First, how are you feeling? Mm -hmm. I know I'm in a funk today. What are your thoughts on last night's game? Yeah, I'm in a little bit of a funk, too. Uh, my family took it really hard. My wife and son are real huge Lions fans, and they were not happy with everything that happened yesterday. So I'm fine. They're still recovering. Uh, all right. <laughs> Where do you think it went wrong? You could certainly feel the shift in momentum last night. If you could pinpoint mm -hmm. it, where was the downfalls beginning? You know what? The downfalls were the unforced errors, the dropped passes, the penalties. Jameer Gibbs' his fumble, and of course, Dan Campbell's two failed fourth down attempts. But to me, that was only part of it, the failed fourth down attempts. I think the unforced errors in the second half were the big downfall, the biggest, of course, being Jameer Gibbs' fumble, which gave San Francisco a short field. And that play right there, Rochelle, seemed to change all the momentum forward towards the San Francisco 49ers. Okay, I noticed you said the failed fourth down attempts last, which I think it may be key there. You saw so many people on social media last night saying, had we only kicked, had we only kicked, you know, this would have been the score. But right. to his defense, do you think this is kind of what got us to this NFC championship game? Absolutely. And you hit it right on the head. This is why people love Dan Campbell. At one point, he had the nickname Dan Gamble because of those fourth down attempts that he did during the season. So, yeah, this is what got the Lions there. Sometimes what works for you in the regular season does not necessarily work in the playoffs. And this is what happened with the Lions. Those fourth down gambles, maybe this was not the time in the NFC Championship game with the Super Bowl at stake. This may not have been the time to not go for those two fourth quarter field or fourth down field goals and instead try to, to be a little more aggressive. That was not the right call in this situation. So, you know what? You live by the sword, you die by the sword. And in this case, that's what happened with the Detroit Lions yesterday. Yeah, I'm assuming you just heard the two little sound bites we had from Coach Campbell. If you didn't, let me know. I can summarize them. What did you make of his comments about next year is going to be even harder than this year? You know, he, did, he didn't soften the blow for us. We're all kind of like, okay, all right, I'm stressed already. Yeah, no, he didn't. And here's the thing. Green Bay is going to be good next year. Chicago may actually be better than they were this year, especially the way they played in the second half of the season. And Rochelle, the NFC has so many good teams. Philadelphia is good, despite their collapse in the second half. Dallas is a good team. Uh, we saw how good San Francisco is. The Los Angeles Rams are a good team. Seattle's a good team. And we have no idea what the NFC South is going to look like now that they've made some coaching changes, especially in Atlanta and Carolina. So it's going to be really tough for the Lions to emerge from that group of really good teams in the NFC next season. Can they do it? Absolutely they can do it but there's no guarantee they will. So Dan Campbell was 100% right there when he said there's no guarantee they actually get back to this point ever again. We're talking about shuffles and potential changes, and we mentioned some of the players due to leave. Who could be the biggest loss, do you think, in free agency? Biggest loss would be Jonah Jackson. I think he's helped solidify that offensive line. He is a good card, and we saw the offensive line at times struggle without Jonah Jackson in there. Another loss that I think could be huge that was on there with C.J. Gardner-Johnson, who was also – when healthy, one of the better safeties on this team. Another guy you didn't mention, Jalen Reeves Maven, who is a special team standout and an all pro. If he leaves, he's an unrestricted free agent this year. If he leaves, that changes things for the special teams as well. And Lions special teams very quietly were very, very good this year and were a key part of the reason that they were able to make it all the way to the NFC championship game. Let's talk about Goff. Finished the night completing 61% of passes for more than 270 yards and a touchdown. All in all, a solid game from Goff. What does his future in Detroit look like? I loved leading up to this championship game last night. The Jared Goff chants happening where you'd least expect them. <laughs> You know what? I would love to see and say that he's going to stick around here for a while, and I do believe that. But the Lions do have a big decision to make this offseason. Do they give him a contract extension, which would keep him here a few more years, or do they let him play out the final year of his contract next year and then maybe push that decision down the road a year? I think that's going to be the key to this offseason as well, Rochelle. What they do with Jared Goff and whether they're laying plans maybe for a future quarterback in a year or two or – whether they decide to ride the Rapids with Jared Goff for the next three, four, five years, and how much money is that going to cost if they do give him a contract extension? We could be looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of $40, $45 million for Jared Goff with a new contract per year. All right, as we're wrapping up here, I do want your thoughts on Michigan and the new head coach, Sean Moore. What are, your, what are you thinking? I think he's a very good recruiter. I think he's stepping into some pretty tough shoes with what Jim Harbaugh did this past season, leading Michigan to a national championship. 
But I think Sharon Moore is the right man for the job. The big question for me is how many coaches will be left from that Michigan staff that don't go with Jim Harbaugh to Los Angeles? How many coaches will he have to replace? And will those coaches that he has to replace be as good as the coaches who are leaving? I think that's the biggest question. Another question, how many recruits may actually decide to re-enter the market and not come to Michigan as a result of Jim Harbaugh not being there, but Sharon Moore being there? I think those are two main questions that need to be answered this offseason. All right, as we wrap, quick, quick question for you. I think you mentioned, was it your wife and your son who are heartbroken? Is that what you said at the top yes. of the interview? Who are they rooting mm-hmm. in the Super Bowl now? They're not. Both of them have told me that they are not watching the Super Bowl. They have no desire to watch the Super Bowl. So I'm going to watch the Super Bowl, but it looks like I'm going to have to cook my own food for the Super Bowl. I was just joking about this with our Shayna Humphreys. The Super Bowl is on CBS, so we've been so excited for it. But I think you do have a lot of Detroiters and Lions fans who are like, I got to I got to sit this one out for my mental health. I'm, I'm a little too bitter right now. <laughs> So tough year for us. But Tony Ortiz, thank you so much. Sportscaster for WWJ News Radio 950. We appreciate your insight and perspective. Anytime, Rochelle.